But guys, now we're going to go real quick. Now we're going to jump into it. We're going to go to Acts, the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to chapter 5, the book of Acts, chapter 5, and we're going to start off at verse 12. Hallelujah. And uh, it may come up. I cannot remember. I think I might have put it in the NLT. I actually changed it just a second ago to the NIV, but we can keep it in the NLT. Uh, and because, like I say, man, what's the best translation for you? The one that you read. Praise the Lord. So uh, chances are the one I'm coming out of, many of you don't have it anyway. So, uh, praise the Lord. so you can read, you can follow along, or you can listen. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It says the apostles uh, performed many signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet in Solomon's congregate. And it says, no one uh, else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. <clears throat> Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. <coughs> As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. That's crazy. Wow. Right? Can you imagine being a man of God and people like, man, let me just lay on the street so your shadow can pass by me. Hello. <laughs> and it says, <clears throat> crowds gathered also from around the towns of Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits or possessed by evil spirits, other translations say. And all of them, somebody say all. All. Gretchen said it earlier. All, all means all. All means all, and that's all, all means. Hello. <laughs> and all of them were healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Church, as we continue in our sermon series called No Other Name, thank you, Jesus, that there indeed is no other name that's worthy it. to be praised. That's right. Hallelujah. If you were here last week, then you would have heard that great testimony by Miss Bev, and you would know that there was no other name that could have saved her the way he did. Amen. There's no other name that could have delivered her. There's no other name that could have set her free Amen. like Jesus did. There is no other name that could have changed that woman. Hello. Yeah. Except the name of Jesus. Yeah. No other name would have been willing and or able to do the things that Jesus Christ did for her. If you would have been here on Wednesday night, man, then you heard an explosive, powerful word by Pastor Rob. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Last word. And you would know when he was talking about surrendering all of our stuff and surrendering our sin, then we would know that there was no other name that we could surrender that stuff to and truly be set free except the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so awesome. And there is truly no other name. Amen. I want you just to look around for a second, man. Look to your neighbor, to the right, and then the one that you ignored because they got on your nerves a little bit. <laughs> and I want you to begin just to, to see your family. So I want you to look, man, at, at, at this packed out house. Yeah, hallelujah. We're crammed in here like sardines. We got people in the lobby. If we can give our lobby people a hand. Two of you told know, some people would go home if they had to sit in the lobby. Yeah, praise the Lord, right. they're still sitting in the lobby. Amen. But I wanted us to just take a look around because since the moment we have planted Source Church, we have been slapped with a label, and people love to do yeah. it. Now it's just funny, but we've been slapped with a label, and people yeah. call us a cult. Yeah. So, which is pretty cool. But uh, I wanted you to begin. <laughs> they call Jesus a whole lot worse things than a cult. Yeah. But I wanted us to look around, man, because I want us to see that we're crammed in here like sardines. We got people sitting in the lobby, uh, not because we're a cult, but because there is no other name but Jesus. Yeah. There's no other name but Jesus that would get us to be this close. Some of y'all don't even like each other. <laughs> close, so you know, you don't have no choice to make up space yet. <laughs> but two, it's because of the name of Jesus. Now, if we came in here under the name of Frank and got crammed in here, it would be a cult. Yeah. If we came in here under the name of Robert, it would be a cult. Pretty much. If we came in here under the name of pastors, still be a cult. Yeah. If we came in here under the name of Source Church, it would be a church yeah. cult. Yeah. But we come in here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name that brings us here. There's no other name that keeps us here. There's no other name worthy to be praised. There's no other name worthy to be worshipped. Except the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just wanted to get that out. Some of the people who say we are cults here today. <laughs> Bring it. God, so awesome. I'm gonna embarrass them. Go, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 okay. I would. 
would, but I know some of y'all, and some of y'all are like a caged animal. Let me have it. 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 But today, man, I want to talk about uh, four healings. Four healings, three uh, that are outside of the, of the uh, particular passage of the scripture that we just read. But I want to talk about four healings. Four healings that I believe, indeed, that we can begin to learn from. Four healings that I believe, man, will begin to change the way that we really begin to view the name Jesus and the power that his name possesses Amen. alone. Four healings that will cause us to utter three little words, but yet have such a powerful punch to them. I am healed. Jesus, there's such power in his name. Can everybody at the count of three Jesus. just shout out? And not just Jesus, but like really <laughs> shout his name out. One, come on, get ready. Two, let it just erupt. Let paint, peel the paint off of this place. Okay. <laughs> you got repaint anyway, so peel the paint off this place. <laughs> Three, come on. Jesus! Yeah, hallelujah. Some of y'all just had a breakthrough with Jesus. Man. <laughs> but back in the early church, man, praise the Lord. Back in the early church, they were experiencing phenomenal growth. I mean, it was absolutely mind-blowing. You've seen scripture, man. It just said that the, the, uh, uh, that the multitude were being added to their numbers. Peter preached a sermon, 3,000 people in one day. Yeah. Later on, another thing happens, and 5,000 people that day. I mean, it's absolutely crazy the phenomenal growth they were experiencing. They were experiencing and witnessing amazing things. Amen. Tremendous miracles were taking place, man, by the hands, by the faith, by the words, and obviously by the shadows of those who are following Christ Jesus. Amen. And see, I'm here to tell you the same thing can take place and should take place yeah. in the church today. Yeah. See, we're not a cult, man. We're just absolutely ridiculous, crazy, insane followers of Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. Just like the apostles. Amen. Now, some will say, man, and, and they begin to uh, cause the argument that the reason why that was taking place is because the faith was greater back then when they walked with Jesus. And then afterwards, after he passed, they've seen some of the things, so they expect the faith to be greater. But there's some arguments that could go for that. There's a whole lot that could go against that. For instance, when you begin to look at some of the cats in the Old Testament who didn't walk with Jesus, but yet their faith seems so much greater than some of these guys in the New Testament. I've been guilty of saying, and I'm sure many of you guys have too, I've been guilty of saying, well, miracles and signs and wonders happen more often in other countries because their faith is greater than ours. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if we didn't have some of the things we would have, our faith would be as equal as theirs. Amen. I've been there. I've said that. But I believe that that is absolutely 100% wrong. Mm -hmm. See, I believe that it's not a faith issue as far as believing that God can Old Testament, they believe God can. New Testament, they believe God can. Third world countries, they believe God can. In this country, we believe God can. The difference of the faith comes in is it's not so much a believe God can, but if you're a crazy, radical, ridiculous type of follower of Jesus, if you have that insane, stupid faith that you just know that he can do anything, then it's not a matter of believing that God can. Stop insulting him. What it is comes to be a matter of is that God will. Not that God can heal me. I got that. It don't take a lot of faith to believe that. But your faith actually begins to come in when you stop saying that God can and we start saying that God will. That's where it's at. So let me ask you, do you believe that you have the same faith as Abraham and Sarah? Do you believe that you have the same faith as, as, as Moses or Esther? Do you believe that you have the same faith, man, as, as, as Mother Mary, as Mary Magdalene, as Paul, as Peter? Do you believe that indeed you have that same type of faith? Because really the question shouldn't even begin to entertain our mind as far as do I have the same faith? Come on. It shouldn't ever pop in my mind, do I have the same faith as uh, Alessa Cimarron? Do I have the same faith as Billy Graham? Do I have the same faith, you know what I'm saying, as Smith Wigglesworth? Shouldn't even entertain our mind, but oftentimes it does. What we have to begin to start asking ourselves is not do I have the same faith, but indeed do I have the same faith? Mind. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. 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 Some of y'all thinking about it. Y'all gonna get that here in a minute because we should have a better reaction. It's not do we have the same faith? Because if you believe in Jesus, right. guess what? Newsflash, you have the same faith. Right. Yeah. Right. But do you have the same mind? I get sick and tired of always just hearing about faith to move the mountains. That's awesome. 
But if you don't, if you just have faith to move the mountains, but you don't have the mindset to move God, sit down. Right. Hell right. Right. Because all you're going to be thinking is, God can, God can, God can. But if you have the mindset to move God, then you become a God will, Amen. not a God can. Amen. Stephen was a man who had the mind to move God. Because when he was being stoned to death, when he was being martyred, when he was being killed, he began to pray for their forgiveness. And what happened? It moved the Son of God that he got up off of his throne and began to give a standing ovation. He had the mindset to move God. How do we get that mindset when we come with the expectation that God is going, yeah. that God is doing something? Yeah, Not that God can, but that God is doing it right now. That's right. That's right. When we come to preach messages, when we come to pray with people, when we come to lay hands on people, and we come with the expectation that God is going to do the miraculous. And then when people come, when the people of the church come, when the people in the streets come with that same expectation... <laughs> That they are going to receive the miraculous. Yeah. Not that God can do the miraculous. Yeah. But that, God, that they are going to receive the miraculous. My goodness, church. That is the formula that will always cause heaven to come crashing into earth. Amen. When we have the, the mindset of expectation, that is the formula <laughs> that causes his will in heaven to be done down here on Amen. earth. The mindset. You can tell it when people come with the expectation of worship. Some services, man, is absolutely insane because people are coming with the expectation. Yeah. Yeah. And you can come with, you can tell when people are just coming to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? They're expecting to come in and sit down. They're expecting to hear worship. They're expecting to hear the word. They're not expecting to be moved by God. Yeah. 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 You can tell the difference 100%. I love to be around faithful people. I love to be around people of the faith. And they're awesome. But when you have people in the faith that have the mindset yeah. of expectation, yeah. it's a whole new level. Yeah. Faithful people are great. Yeah. Faithful people sometimes have the corniest jokes. <laughs> people of the faith are sometimes they're straight lie to you. You know the world's crumbling down and tell me, how are you? Blessed and highly favored. <laughs> Yeah, but what's going on? Oh, nothing in my world. Well, shut up. Shut up. I just talked to your spouse. They tell me something completely different. What's going on? Right now. So am I to you in Jesus' name. But people of faith with the mindset that they expect God to move in their situation, with people of faith and the mindset that they expect the miraculous to take place, man, it's a whole new level. They in inspire me. I love to be around people who inspire me. Amen. If I hang around you, because you inspire me. In the mighty name of Jesus. And it's absolutely awesome. It's amazing when you get around those people. And listen, when we come with the expectation, the mindset of expectation, that's when hands heal. Amen. When we come with the mindset of expectation, that's when the dead raise, that's when shadows begin to heal people in the streets. When we come with the mindset of expectation that I am expecting God to do the miraculous, that I am expecting God to do something so unbelievable that I know I can't even begin to truly wrap my mind around it, but I am expecting God to show up, show out, and show off, that's when the amazing begins Amen. to take place. That's when signs and wonders Amen. begin to take place. It really don't take a lot of faith to move a mountain. He says the faith of a mustard seed. Yeah. But it takes a powerful mindset. Yeah. Yes. To begin to move God. Yeah. And so you can see it. Think about it. Why do people of faith always come with struggles? Right? Yeah. <laughs> One thing hits them. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know about this God. <laughs> Just got you off a of crack and now you don't know about it. <laughs> I'm not too I'm not too sure about Jesus. Where is he? Where is he? Where are you? Amen. He's right there. Yeah. Preach. People of a mindset. They get hit, they get hit, they get shoved against the wall, and they're like, ah! Ha ha devil, ha ha! What are you doing? Oh, mercy! That was done a little bit. But what are you saying? 
Brother, do you know who I got coming after you? <laughs> We were talking the other day about deliverance, and uh, Note said uh, to Pastor Rob, he said, and, and maybe some of you guys have noticed it too, he said, Pastor Rob, sometimes when you're doing deliverance, man, he says, you get like, you get straight, like, ghetto and street. Pastor Rob, that was just awesome, man. Before we do deliverance, man, right, like, Pastor Rob's talking with people. <laughs> Just like that. Right? <laughs> right with his hands. Straight up, right top. And it will stop the little ones and no lie. It's serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so P. Ron says, P. Ron says, no. He goes, man, he, he says, it's a war, man. It's Amen. I go, Amen. I go straight straight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told him though, I said, no, why do you Lord think God. I'm so confident with getting in their face? <laughs> <laughs> if that demon tried to do anything to me, shucks all might. <laughs> We'd be doing a resurrection and then casting out. <laughs> right? Shucks. <laughs> be the blood of Jesus. what's so cool, man, is he comes with the mind of the expectation. Yeah. <laughs> Even when sometimes on Wednesdays they want to give us a fit, we'll go to the next one and then like we did, we'll come back to it. Yeah, man. That's right, right, man. With the mind of expectation. <laughs> yeah. My God, that's yeah. when amazing things begin to take place. Wow, man. Scripture says that people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on their beds in the mats so that at least Peter's shadow yeah. might fall upon them as he passed by. That is expectation. Yeah. My yeah. God. <clears throat> Look at that. When Jesus was healing the four friends, or, uh, when Jesus was healing the people, the four friends brought the man, they dug a hole in the wall right. or in the ceiling and began to lower him down. They couldn't even get into the house. Why? Because people came with expectation. Yeah. Because if not, people would have been leaving. Yeah. And the friends expected Jesus to do something that they dug through my man's ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Can you even get ticked off sitting next to Jesus? Man, what are you doing? <laughs> Let them lower the sickness. grab a hold of is yes indeed maybe you're here today and you can say that you have the same faith as these people and that's awesome but I want you to be able to leave here today and say that you have the same mind yeah. as yes. these people yes. the same mind I get that you have the same faith but do you have the same mind we're going to look at the woman with the bleeding issue we're going to look at the man uh, who was uh, uh, born blind and we're going to look at the man indeed with the withered hand but first, praise the Lord, comes a woman with a bleeding issue. She shows us so much in the spiritual. Amen. In your chair. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let me get you to kneel down, sis, and then stretch out your hand. Just like if you're going to touch a cloak in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me get Randy. <laughs> Kiki and Whiteside in Jesus' name. <laughs> You guys are the mean crowd people. <laughs> we are trying to push our sister out. Hallelujah. Push her out. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 and now we're playing freeze frame. <laughs> freeze frame. 
This is the scene that begins to get set up, man. As this woman with a bleeding issue, praise the Lord, teaches us so much in the spiritual. The woman with the issue of blood, man, teaches us that when we have to fight, we need to get down and dirty. Uh -oh. She teaches us, man, that when it is time to fight, that we cannot 100% without a shadow of a doubt, we cannot give up, but indeed we have to push. She begins to show us in the spiritual, man, that if we want a breakthrough, then we can't expect somebody to come and give it to us. Yeah. We've got to get our breakthrough through Jesus. Amen. She begins to show us, man, that if we want our breakthrough, we can't expect other people to come pushing us for a breakthrough. Because oftentimes, just like the crowd did with the woman with the bleeding issue, they try to push you out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes what we have to begin to understand is when we want our breakthrough... When you have the mindset of expectation, you know indeed that you have to go a little further. You've got to dig a little deeper and you've got to push a little harder. Yeah. When the crowd tries to stop you, you've got to push. When the crowd tries to overtake you, you've got to push. Yeah. There's somebody here today, man, and you are in your crowd. Yeah. Whatever your crowd may be, you are in your crowd. And right now, man, they are trying to just beat you straight down. You're in the middle of a situation. You are in the middle of the crowd and you realize that, man, it is so much bigger than you. Yeah. You're in the middle of your crowd right now and you're realizing that your crowd is so much tougher than you, so much stronger than you. You're realizing that your crowd is far more powerful than you. You are realizing right now that at any given moment you can be pushed down by the power of your crowd and be straight <laughs> trampled to death. Yeah. And you begin to ask yourself, why am I even here? What Am I even doing? You're here because you are fighting for your life. Amen. You're here because you know there's something great inside of you just dying and trying to come out. You know that God has something insane for you. You are here today because there is no other name that has the power to cause you to come out of your isolation hellhole that you have been hiding in for God knows how long. You are here today because there is no other name that has the power to call you up out of your comfort zone. You're here today because there is no other name that has the power to call you to step up all, out on, off of the shore and onto the water. Yeah. You are here today because there is no other name that has the power to cause yourself, your weak old self, to push through the crowd. When everyone else is telling you to shut up, when everyone else is telling you to stop it, when everyone else is telling you you're done, you're an idiot, you're a loser, you're never going to be healed, just get out of the way. Stop wasting their time. Stop wasting his time. All you are is a waste of time. But yet, what do you do? You reach out to touch Jesus. This woman leaves the comfort of her home. What are you willing to leave the comfort of? To touch Jesus. Yeah. This woman left the comfort of her home. Why? Expectancy. Amen. This woman then fought through that tough crowd. Why? Expectancy. This woman pushed to get her breakthrough. Why? Expectancy. Yeah. She reached out to touch Jesus yeah. with expectancy. Amen. See, truth is, church, it was at this moment. Picture it, man crowd all the way around her. She's fighting through this woman with a bleeding issue. She's already an outcast. She's already considered unclean. My goodness, if some of the men knew what she was when she was pushing through them, she probably would have been stoned to death. How dare this woman with her period that hasn't stopped in 12 years going to touch me? Now I'm unclean. Mm -hmm. Right? At this moment, when it's the do or die moment, man, She's going down and she begins to reach out her hand. And it was at this second that her faith is telling her, this is it, baby girl. This indeed is the do or die moment. We are either going to touch that man of God and live, or we're going to fall flat on our face and we're going to die. Yeah. But her mind, <laughs> her mindset in her faith, Begin to tell her, you've come this far, don't stop now. You push this hard, don't stop now. You've dug this deep, don't stop now. 
and she reaches out her hand in the midst of the crowd to grab a hold of Jesus. I want you to grab that now. She grabbed a hold of Jesus. Jesus did not grab a hold of her. Oh, come on, somebody. We got to begin to grab a hold of that. It is so awesome to have Jesus reach out and touch you. But how many of you guys have been in a hellish situation that you just didn't have time for Jesus to touch you? You had to reach out and touch Jesus. Come on, somebody. This woman didn't have time to get Jesus' attention. This woman couldn't get around the crowd to get Jesus' attention. She said, my God, I just got to touch Jesus. Some of us in here today need to understand that you've got to reach out and begin to touch Amen. Jesus. Amen. This woman praised the Lord. Yep. This woman went low when everybody else was going high. This woman went for his feet when everybody else was going for his side. Yeah. This woman went behind him, unseen, when everybody else wanted to be seen. Right. This woman went to touch Jesus when everybody else wanted Jesus to touch them. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. woman's faith of expectancy oh was amazing. <laughs> and whenever we show up with the faith of expectancy, <laughs> my God, if we only knew the power that we could possess Amen. and the very things that we could cause heaven to do yes, when we show up with the faith of expectancy. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second healing is this, man. We have the man who was born blind, right? This is the man, man, for some of you guys who are not familiar. John uh, chapter 9, man. Check it out. Take a look. It's in the book. It's a powerful story, man. I love it. But it, it's one of my favorite healing stories just because it's so radical to me and had to be fun. <laughs> because this is the story, man, where Jesus plays, uh, uh, puts mud pies on this guy's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and I just love it, man. And we see that the guy who gets mud pies on his eyes actually has the same attitude as a woman with a bleeding issue. And some of you guys are thinking, of course he has the same attitude because he's going to have an attitude if you put mud pies on his eyes. <laughs> Which indeed, I would say that I agree with that 100%. Have you ever had somebody, now think about this, man. This is where Jesus spits on the mud and he begins to make mud pies and blah, now, have you ever been talking up close to somebody? <laughs> yeah. And they spit, and you just watch it as it begins to hit you. I've shared a story with you Don't guys do before. It. I Don't shared it. it. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. Oh. I was talking to a gentleman one time who was eating pizza. <laughs> and have you ever noticed how sometimes when people get up close to you, you, you know, you like, you like, Okay, yeah, that's just up for yeah. And you take a step back till they take a step up. Right? And eventually, like, your back is up against the wall. Your back's up against the wall, and my man's talking, and blah, 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 and a piece of pizza flies out. And literally, I'm watching, I'm like, no, no. I couldn't matrix it because I was literally stuck up against the wall. And it landed. I'm cross eyed, like, watching it. And it hits my lip. Natural reaction. Nice off. There was pepperoni. Praise the Lord. Right. And in my mind, I'm going, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Jesus, why couldn't you have just freeze framed me? Are you you get so frustrated. This I do. You know, like, I'm just have people, I've had people talking to me, man. Like, they'll come up and be like, hey, you know, I fell in the grocery store one time, was talking to me, and he's like, uh, um, I really need to, you know, come by uh, the church and talk to you. And I was like, awesome. So people in line. So he goes, what's the problem? Is? And as he does it, he gets close and literally, like, spit landing in my eye. <laughs> Now I'm trying not to blink. And he's like, I know, serious, right? Uh huh. Wow. Wow, we need it. Whoa. I got my eye out for you. Right? Getting paper towels down in your eyeballs. 
But who's this man? Born blind. <laughs> He's blind, man. And Jesus and his motley crew just come rolling up on the scene. And Peter begins to ask the question. He says, uh, Jesus, oh boy over here. Which one? The one who can't see us, Jesus. Come on, man. Pay attention. <laughs> um, why is he blind? And Jesus, I can only imagine he's probably like, uh, guys, he's blind, not deaf. Let's walk over here. <laughs> no. But is, is he blind because of a sin his parents committed? Or is he blind because of a sin that he committed? And Jesus says, man, actually, neither. He's not blind because of a sin his parents committed, nor is he blind because of a sin that he committed. God says he's blind so that God's glory may be revealed. He's, got, he's blind so that God's glory may be seen. He's blind so that God's glory may be experienced by everyone who is right here, right now. See, guys, I want us to understand, sometimes we are in a situation not because of you. Sometimes we're in a situation not because of others. Sometimes we are in a situation so that people can experience the glory and the power of God. If we would just stop crying, if we would just stop trying to figure our own way out and just call upon the name of Jesus and say, Lord, I'm here. I don't know why, but I got to expect that you're going to do something awesome. And understand, sometimes you are where you're at so that God's glory may be revealed. Revealed to you right where you're at, but also for others to begin to see. Hello. That's right. Come on, thank you, Jesus. If we could grab a hold, how much it is that God wants to use us, where we're at, we would completely stop crying about where we're at, because we'd understand that God wants to use us. But Jesus begins to make mud pies. With this guy's eyes. Now this is a little dry. What do you guys? What do you guys? Expect? <laughs> journey off <laughs> to a particular pool. Now, here's what's so cool. Before we get into this, man, you have to, uh, at least with me, the way I think about this, man, I have to imagine, man, that his disciples had to have been thinking to themselves, as Jesus is getting ready to plaster this man's eyes, they had to have been thinking, there is no way that Jesus is going to do this. As Jesus begins to dig down into the dirt, dig down into the dirt, getting saliva into his mouth, and he begins to spit on the ground. You know that you know that the disciples are like, nah, he's, he's not going. <laughs> Do you think he is? Thomas is like, no, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> but he might. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and they're going, no, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. And Peter's like, shh. And Jesus says, bam! And they're like, no, Jesus, come on, man. He didn't even see that coming, man. <laughs> and Jesus straight up just mud pies this man's eyes. He right? spits, mud pies his eyes. And I love how scripture, though, however, says that he anointed his eyes. Now, I have been in, in, in grocery store one time, man, and I didn't have time to cover my sneeze. Yeah. Yeah, Hands were full. I went off to the side, but when I did, there was a gentleman standing there. <laughs> when he began to look at me as if he was irritated, 
I shared with him, it's okay, bro, I just anointed you. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, he didn't receive it like a blind man. <laughs> but anointed nonetheless. But here's Jesus, man. He gets done playing patty cakes with this man's eyes, and he sends him on a journey. Now, I say that Jesus sent this man on a journey because he sent him to the pool of Siloam when there was a much closer pool by where Jesus and this blind man was. But Jesus sends him on a journey, gives him specific directions, specific instructions. And I can't help but to know through Holy Spirit that some of you guys are here today, really all of us are here today, and Christ has given you specific directions, specific instructions for all of us, number one, on how to live. Amen. Hello. Yeah. 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 Number two, on the way that we are to present ourselves. Right. Hello. Number three, on the things that he has called us to do. Number four, on the way that we are to love. I don't care who's made it legal. If it's not in God's word, if it's against God's word, government can legalize it all they want. Right. But it goes against God's word. Amen. I don't care who says it's cool. I don't care what sin it is that people want to okay, what sin it is that people want to put on a higher scale uh, or a lower scale. It doesn't matter if it goes against God's word. And he has given us specific directions and specific instructions. And then when we don't do what it is that he told us to do, Hello, if we don't do what he told us to do, or we do what he told us not to do, same thing, then indeed we're sinning and we are coming off of a lazy mindset of a lack of expectation. See, oftentimes, unfortunately, we as a people, we begin to tap out. Why? Because of journey. Because more times than not, Jesus sends us on a journey. You want a breakthrough? He says, man, it's going to be a journey. You want a healing? Jesus says, okay, come on, but it's going to be a journey. You want that spouse that I have just for you? It's going to be a journey. Women, men, stop tapping out and settling. If you met him or her on a one-night stand, chances are, hello. (laughs) We've got to stop settling. God has specific instructions specific Amen. directions. But oftentimes what happens is we tap out. It's a journey. When it becomes nothing but a stone's throw away is what we expect. I want the stone throw away, Jesus. And he's like, no, no, no. If you want what I have, it's a journey. If you want the, the miraculous, it's a journey. Amen. How did you show up to church today? Expecting the miraculous show up on a journey or is church just a stone throw away to you and you just here just simply to be here if you came without the mindset of expectation then i promise you you didn't come in the mindset that the lord told you to come into. that's right see we have to begin to grab a hold of this if this man didn't show up with the mindset of expectation when jesus puttied his eyes then he would have just wiped it off and been like, seriously, dude? (laughs) Right? If this man didn't have that mindset of expectation Mm -hmm. that when he washed off his eyes that he was going to be healed, he would have went to any pool, not the journey. Why did he do that? Because it goes back to specific instructions and specific directions, just like Jesus Christ has for you. There is, I promise you this, there is an easy way out. There's easy way out of what it is that God is telling us to do all day long. There was closer pools for this man. But he takes the journey. What journey are you willing to take for the Lord? This man, any pool, I promise you, any pool would have washed the mud off. Any single one of them would have washed the mud off. But he was told to go to one. And what's crazy about the easy way out is oftentimes it looks the same. Pool's a pool. (laughs) Water's water. It's going to wash it off. The easy way out looks the same. And what the crazy thing is, 
the easy way out, oftentimes, you can do the same. Not only does the pool look the same, but in the pool, you could do the same. Grab a hold of this, somebody. God's calling you to do something, and you've taken the easy way out because it looked the same. Mm. God's calling you to do something, and you've taken the easy way out because you're doing the same. You're doing the same thing that you would have done on the journey. But this is just the easy way out. Here's the catch of that. It may look the same. You may be doing the same, but you don't get the same result. Exactly. It looks the same. You're doing the same, but you do not get the same result. Why? Because you get the result of the miraculous. You get the result of the powerful. Yeah. You get the result of the unexpected. You get the result, yeah. man, of, of, of the, the marvelous when we do what it is that he has called us to do. Amen. With the expectancy of God's going to blow our mind. But whenever we back away from that, it's because we become lazy and we've taken the easy way out. <coughs> We'll let, we'll let him get out of here. But in Aubrey, an awesome yeah. 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 See, when God calls us to do something and we start off with the mindset of expectation, when we start off that God is going to do something absolutely amazing today. Lord, I am so excited that I get to go to church. Yeah. I was thinking about that last night, and I was like, man, I am so thankful that I, I have an amazing team. <laughs> That doesn't have to come to church. Amen. An amazing team that doesn't have to come and do Amen. worship. An amazing team that doesn't have to come and co-pastor. An amazing team that doesn't have to uh, uh, pastor the youth. An amazing team that doesn't have to greet people. An amazing team that doesn't have to do the sound. But it's a team that gets to. Amen. And every time we do it, we show up with the expectancy that God is going to do something great. If you don't, you don't show up. That's right. That's right. Because we don't want people with the expectancy not being able to come in because it's too crowded with people who don't expect. Right. Amen. We have to begin to grab a hold of that. When we don't expect, it's because we have walked away from the expectancy of greatness. Heaven will always move down here on earth whenever we take the journey and not the easy way out. Whenever it is that we begin to fight through the crowd, he will always move heaven down here on earth. When we come out, instead of staying in the house, he will move heaven down here on earth. When we reach out our hand, hello, instead of keeping it by our side, he will move heaven down here on earth. This man went to go wash his face off. And as he is passing by everybody, passing by the easier, closer pools, you know that you know that people were making fun of him. Not only because is he blind, but he's also an outcast because of that. But now he's walking around mud face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's just completely beat up. But yet, what are you willing to allow people to make fun of you about? Because you're doing what it is that God's called you to do. Yeah. Well, I'm worried about what people are going to say. Okay. Are you worried about what people are going to say? Or are you worried about doing what it is that God's called you to do? Yeah. Well, I'm worried about what I'm going to look like. Well, it doesn't matter because when they see the miraculous taking place Amen. in your life, they're going to want to look like the way that you just looked like. So are you willing to do what it is that God has called you to do? He passes by the easier pools. What are we willing to pass by for, for the will of God? What are we willing to pass by because we're expecting the miraculous to take place? Will we honestly begin to take the journey or the easy way out? This man takes the journey. Why? Because of a mindset of expectation. He's expecting God to do something absolutely amazing. Everyone else laughed at him, but yet he takes the journey. Because he has a mindset of expectation. Jesus sends this man to the pool. There's a reason why he sent him to this specific pool. And when the man heard the pool that Jesus was, was sending him to, there was a reason why the man, without a shadow of a doubt, went to that pool. The pool of Siloam, man. In this particular pool, they would begin to gather the water at the, at, uh, during the Feast of the Booths, and they would liken the water out of this pool to the spring of salvation. This pool, Siloam means sent. Jesus was sent into this world to seek and save those that are sick. So he can save those that are lost. Yeah. Jesus is sending this man to this pool, not just to save his sight, but most importantly, to save his life. Yeah. And one of Jesus' names is Shiloh, which is also translated Siloam. 
So what's so powerful about that is this man maybe had no idea that the Messiah just patty caked his eyes. But he did have the expectancy. When he heard the pool that he was being sent to, he did have the expectancy that he was going to meet the Messiah. He did have the expectancy that he was going to be healed. He did have the expectancy that he was going to be saved. Do you have that expectancy in the Messiah like this man did? He goes to the pool with expectation. Watch this now. Not to wash the mud off of his eyes, but he went to the pool of expectancy to receive his sight. Amen. That's right. He went to the pool to not wash the mud off of his eyes, but to wash away the mud of every bad decision. Yeah, yeah. Every horrible choice that he's ever made in life. And he washed it off with the living water in the name of Jesus. It's absolutely awesome. The third healing, praise the Lord, comes in with a man with a withered hand. Hallelujah. We got, believe it or not, we got a man with a withered hand here. God is awesome. Take my strong hand, child. <laughs> but the third thing man is the man with the withered hand. Now, when Jesus steps into the church, there is no doubt that the man with the withered hand knew exactly who Jesus was. When Jesus calls him out to him, man, the man comes with expectancy, with expecting the miraculous to begin to take place. He's expecting to be healed. How do we know that? Because even when the religious rulers begin to tell him, you can't be healed on this day, it's a Sabbath. And they begin to ridicule this man. But what? He reaches out his hand and <coughs> does not hesitate. He reached out his hand with no hesitation. What is God calling you to reach out to? What is God calling you? He says, stretch out your hand. What is God calling you to stretch out to him? I pray that when God calls you to stretch it out, just like he did with the man with the withered hand, that there is no hesitation. Right. But you begin to stretch Amen. out to him the very thing that he's telling you to give to him. Stretch it out. And when we have no hesitation, that only comes with the mindset of expectation. So what is it that others are telling you that you can't do that God is calling you to do? What is it that others are telling you not to present to him? Don't give that to him. You can't stretch that out to him. But Jesus is saying, stretch it out wow. to me. What is it that others are saying? There's no way that you could be healed of that. But Jesus is saying, stretch it out to me and let me do the miraculous in your life. Now, why is God calling you out opposed to everybody else in the crowd? He sees your attitude. Yeah. He sees your attitude of expectancy. Amen. Not an attitude of timidness, but an attitude of expectancy. So will you listen to those who claim to know? Will you listen to those who say that you can't get right? Will you listen to the very people who will say that you can never change? Your circumstances will never change. Your marriage will never change. Your life will never change. Your addictions, you're always going to be on them. You're just a deadbeat. You're just like your dad. You're just like his dad. You're just like his dad. You're just like your mom. You're just like her mom. And you're just like her mom. And your kid's going to be like you. Come on, somebody. Are you going to listen to them? Or are you going to listen to the one who's calling you to stretch it out? Look at the cross, man. He's already stretched out to you. That's right. Yeah. So you need to begin to stretch out to him. The people in the streets begin to be healed. Why? Because just like the man with the withered hand, he's also someone with a withered hand. <laughs> yeah, I had to get it straight. I, I, I said earlier, I said, man, how is Jesus going to come up with a withered hand? He played Jesus in the play. That's okay. We're gonna pray for him later. <laughs> he stretches out his hand, man, and just in, in an instant, bam! Jesus begins to heal him. Why? Hallelujah. Because he met Jesus where Jesus was at. Amen. That's our expectancy. Hallelujah. He expected the miraculous to take place. Yeah. When we begin to meet Jesus where Jesus is at, in that mindset of expectancy, in that faith of expectancy, my. God, you'll be amazed at what heaven will begin to do down here on earth. Show up 
expecting the miraculous to take place in your marriage. Show up expecting the miraculous to take place in your addiction. Show up expecting the miraculous to take place in your life. Show up expecting the miraculous to take place in your sickness. Show up expecting the miraculous to take place in your sin. And you will be blown away when we show up like the woman with the bleeding issue. When we show up with the, like the man who is blind. When we show up like the man with the withered hand. Amen. When we simply show up with the mindset Hallelujah. of expectancy. We will be amazed yeah. at what our Savior Amen. will do. You will be amazed at what heaven will begin to do down here on earth. My goodness. The people are in the streets laid out expecting Peter's shadow to heal them. Now listen. If you begin to dig into this, there's a reason why they were putting such faith into a shadow. One superstition. Oh, superstition. Two, man, it's pagan, pagan beliefs that a shadow could heal, that a shadow would have faith. So they show all oh, that a shadow could, uh, they had faith in the shadow that, that indeed it could heal them. So you have superstitions and you have this pagan belief that indeed there is power in a shadow. But listen, here's what's so awesome about the God that we serve. It may be superstitions that got you there, but it was expectation that kept them there, and it was the Holy Ghost that healed them there. Make no mistake, I don't care how you got here today. All I pray is that you come here today expecting to be healed in your situation. And it's not going to be us to heal you, but it's going to be Holy Ghost to heal you. So I don't care how you got here, but let expectation keep you here so that the Holy Ghost can heal you here. Because that indeed is what it is that he wants to do. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, my goodness, church. If we can grab a hold of that, they didn't care how they were healed. <laughs> they just wanted it. Handkerchief, okay, wave your hand at me. Hand the shadows. They just wanted their healing. Yeah. And what we got to begin to grab a hold of, man, is nowhere in Scripture does it technically say that it was Peter's shadow that healed them. Neither does it say that, that, that the disciple, the apostles at this time, commanded the people to lay in the streets. Nor does it say that they condoned their acts of laying in the streets. The people, with the mindset of expectation, did that on their own. Mm-hmm. I don't know why pastor hadn't come to see me in the hospital. I don't know why pastor hadn't come and laid hands on me. Lay hands on yourself Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor might be a little bit busy. Hello. <coughs> but also, <laughs> hello. Come on. But also, come with the mindset of expectation Tell that. Right. and let us lay hands on it. Amen. That's right. Amen. But come with the mindset yeah. of expectation right. so that when we do lay hands on you, the miraculous will begin to happen because I promise you, we're going to lay hands on you with the mindset of expectation. So come with the mindset of expectation and amazing things begin to take place. The people's attitude they knew that Peter was a, was a mighty man of God. And because he was a mighty man of God, they expected the mighty power of God to begin to work through the man of God. So they showed up expecting the miraculous to show up. They showed up expecting the miraculous to show out. They showed up expecting the miraculous to show off. And that indeed took place. Can you imagine if we showed up to church expecting the miraculous to take place yeah. to show up to show out and to show off can you imagine if we went to work expecting <coughs> the miraculous to show up yeah. show out and show off if we went to, ch- uh, uh, to school expecting the miraculous to show up show out and show off you're a man of God, ain't you? You're a woman of God, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. Then let the miraculous begin to work Amen. through you. Amen. Expect Holy Spirit to use you in yes. such a mind-blowing way. If I got my worship team come up. Now, I believe when you begin to look at this scripture and see that even other cities around Jerusalem begin to have the people pour out, I believe that there's no way possible that Peter's shadow could have hit everybody in the streets that day. But yet... Verse 16 lets us know that all were healed. But we have to grab a hold, man, that it wasn't Peter's shadow in the first place. It's Holy Spirit. 
when we lay hands on you, it's not our hands in the first place. Amen. That's right. It's Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. When we do deliverance, it's not our words in the first place. It's Holy Spirit. When we show up expecting the move of God, when we show up expecting the miraculous, I promise you God is going to move heaven down here on earth and your minds will be blown. When people show up expecting the miraculous to take place in their life, expecting the miraculous to take place in their situation, expecting the miraculous to take place in their circumstances, I promise you heaven will indeed collide on earth. And his will will be done. In Acts chapter 5, praise the Lord, we see that very thing take place. The sick in the streets, I promise you, weren't healed by shadows. They weren't healed by magic. They weren't healed by superstitions. Or pagan religions. They were healed by Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 4 came alive. When he says, stretch out your hand and heal and perform and miraculous signs and wonders will follow through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform the miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your servant, Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out. What to heal and what to perform miraculous signs and wonders. Who's he talking about? You. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand to heal, to perform miraculous signs and wonders through who? Because I'm a pastor, because that title will get me absolutely nowhere. Yeah. <coughs> but I expect that because I am a man of God. Amen. And I expect that because it will happen through yeah. my holy and righteous and all powerful, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The name above all names, the name that is no other name higher or more worthy to be praised. Amen. Church, I promise you. The miracles in the Gospels, the miracles in Acts are still being done in today's day and age. And the truth is, sure, we have the faith to say that, well, yes, we believe that can happen. But do you have the mindset of expectancy that know that it will happen to you today? To know that it will happen to you today. It's not that hard to believe that demons can be casted out. It's really not even that hard to believe that the dead can raise. It's not that hard to believe that the sick can be healed. But what do you expect when you place your hands upon them? Do you expect that to take place? When we come with the mindset of expectancy, we allow Holy Spirit to demonstrate the Lord's power, His mercy, His might. We allow through our hands, signs and wonders begin to take place. And we begin to show people the true Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I promise you this, trusting in shadows and trusting in superstitions is absolutely stupid. But, trusting in Jesus is the wisest thing, I promise you, that you can ever do in your life. Think about this. If it was cloudy that day, would everybody have been out of luck? If it was high noon and there was indeed no shadow of Peter, would nobody have gotten healed that day? Praise God. His healing power does not depend on our ability to be in the right place at the right time under the right conditions. His healing power is through Holy Spirit. Shadows are going to come and are going to go. The Holy Spirit is a constant that will be here forever.
your shadow is not going to heal somebody. The Holy Spirit could use your shadow to heal somebody. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you right here, right now, my Lord. God, for your grace and for your mercy. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now, my Lord God, that indeed we can stretch out our hands, my Lord God. We can stretch out our hands through Jesus Christ to heal. In the name of Jesus, we can stretch out our hands and believe and perform and expect miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray right now in the sound of my voice that each person in here who has an ear to hear will begin indeed to stretch out their hands to heal, stretch out their hands to perform signs and wonders, to stretch out their hands to perform the miraculous in the name of Jesus. I pray that each person in here right now, God, will begin, my Lord Jesus, not just to have the faith that can move mountains, but to have the mind of expectation that will move God. And my Lord, I thank you that there is no devil on earth or in hell that could dare stop them, that could dare stop us, that could dare stop a healing, that could dare stop a deliverance, that could dare stop the miraculous. When we show up expecting our God, to do the mind blowing. When we show up expecting our God to do the impossible. When we show up expecting our God to do the miraculous. I thank you, my God, that you will always see to it that heaven will collide down here on earth. And that your will will be done. If there's anybody in here today who don't know Jesus, you want a miracle? <laughs> it's called salvation, baby. One of the greatest miracles ever. That he would take someone as wretched as us and yet save us, redeem us, restore us, renew us, give us a brand new life, a brand new start, a start over in the mighty name of Jesus. And your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that's a miracle. Because you know the things that you've done. And that's you today, just simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. And I promise you, when you ask him to forgive you of your sins, ask him to be your Lord and Savior, I promise you his answer is yes. And yes, that's a miracle. When we think about the things we've done, that he would love us that way. But that's who he is. So that's you, open up your hearts right now. And everybody repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner. And it would be a miracle, a miracle. For, anyone for anyone to forgive me. But Jesus, I thank you. That you are the miracle worker. And I thank you that in you I have forgiveness. If in nobody else, the only thing that matters is I have it in you. So Lord, I thank you. Restore me. Redeem me. Renew me. I am yours. And you are mine. And Jesus, I expect. I expect. Back. The miraculous to take place in my life, in my marriage, in my relationship, in my walk, in my situation, in my struggles, in my troubles, in my circumstances. I expect the miraculous to see in my life. I expect the miraculous to be done through my hands. And I stretch them out to heal. And to perform signs and wonders. All in the name of Jesus. I come expecting, Lord. Just how you want. And all God's baby said. Amen.